Welcome everyone to the Real Who Beans cast. I am your host, Matrix Lord Two One Two, and I'm with Ben. What's up, Ben? What's up, Sally? What's up? What's up, Vaughn? What's up? It's it's getting quite often that I get to say that I'm right lately. <laughs> hey, Doctor Who. But I did call it that Moffat was going to put something out immediately after or shortly after Chris Vetters started talking about Russell T. Davis, the producer, the co-producer, and then there's a story to come about what Christopher Eccleston's going to say about Moffitt because you know that's going to happen because he was going to film the 50th, but he had no clue what the script was until he saw it and like, wait a minute. So that's why they had to get John Hurt. But they kind of like, Moffitt kind of pissed off people at the same time, even though Russell T. Davis and Eccleston are not like on the same level of getting along. Uh, that's retconning like Russell T. Davis's stuff. And he still wanted to piss him off Russell T. Davis by doing the stuff about the marriage with the 10th Doctor. But anyway, mm-hmm. so yeah, that's the whole thing is that that story's going to come out soon, hopefully, with Chris Vax and Lamar. But Moffat is, is great friends with Russell T. Davis, and he was not going to have it, you know, because he's part of the reason and part of the problem of spreading garbage about Christopher Eccleston, making the tabloid say stuff without his name being implicated in. Mm-hmm. So he tried to say he's donating stuff to charity, his script for the 50th, which it's nice you're doing it for charity, but that's not why you're doing it. You're doing it because you want to distract away from the Christopher Eccleston story. And you just want to focus on Doctor Who where people are just forgetting. Because people are going to, you know, want to follow what you're saying. So this whole thing about the Ninth Doctor being the one that killed everybody. And and he's trying to put words in there that's kind of connected to, like, Series 1. Mm-hmm. Where, where, like, you know, with his ears and different things. to try to make it like, oh, yeah, he, he right off after he killed everybody, he just went to Rose. Like, it's very shortly after. But he still just regenerated. That's It's bull that's crap. Bull crap, man. What do you think, Bonham, this Mr. Moffat, silly Moffat? Basically, he's picking, barking off of somebody's personal story. If you don't have nothing to say good, don't say it at all. Do not exploit a situation that, well, you probably had a clue about. But it, it just seems to me that he's trying to, trying to get personal gain off of the story, and it doesn't make sense. I mean, why? Yeah. He doesn't mention but, Boo. About Christopher Eccleston yeah, at all, because, and then the only time he does is when an article comes out. I'm sorry to cut you yeah. off. Get yeah. Sally. I didn't mean to cut you I'm off. Sorry. Go no, ahead. no, 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 no. It's just, I totally agree. I mean, why do it? Why now? Yeah. When you could have done it years ago. Exactly. And you you try to cover it with means of a charity event. You could have done a lot of things for a charity event. You could have told a story from the previous season where it didn't make it, or you could have did something that gave us a little insight behind the scenes of his arrow as in Doctor Who. But no, you have to piggy, you have to exploit somebody's personal story for personal gain, even though you just slug it off like, oh, I'm doing this for charity. Um, charity doesn't involve you exploiting somebody, buddy. That's not charity. That's you trying to be a dick about it, basically. See, he's worried about He's worried about Chris Beckson getting close with the new people in the BBC mm-hmm. because he's working for the BBC again. Yeah, and maybe that might push them to not give stuff for Russell T Davis or him or Gatiss or whoever. I don't even know. If he, I don't even think he had a problem with Gatiss, but it's like they're all together, you mm-hmm. know. And the whole point is that Moffat's wife is big with the BBC too, mm-hmm. so it's like a personal thing for him too. Mm-hmm. Um, he could have done numerous things he could have you know how like russell d davis like let the kids know oh by the way harry jones prime minister didn't well former prime minister didn't die yeah and he did that stuff for the kids like Mm -hmm. you could have did something like that oh hey you know who with madame Kavarian was working for omega oh my god you know omega oh my god you know he could have did some cool stuff yeah but no he just he never mentions eccleson and when he had to talk about eccleson he tried to do it in an intellectual genius way where he's kind of saying that he doesn't care about doctor and he's stupid without actually saying he doesn't care about doctor and he's stupid. You know, like he's trying to trick in his words 
Like he's like Shakespeare in a way, you know? Well. So that's the whole point is that he never, ever talks about Eccleston unless he absolutely has to. And now that you don't talk about him for years, mm -hmm. article hop comes out or a couple articles and boom. Oh, here's my Eccleston thing. Dude, yeah. you're screwed up, man. You are screwed up. Mm-hmm. And I don't care what people say. This is not my – listen. This is not Moffat bashing. Moffat does it to himself yep. for us to call him out on it. Because, mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. we wouldn't say anything against Moffat if he freaking explained everything that he's supposed to explain as a writer. You're supposed to resolve storylines. You're supposed to not leave the audience hanging forever. And you're supposed to do things a certain way and not – screw up continuity and screw up things and whatever. So it's not Moffat hating. It's and not Moffat bashing. We're pointing out his mistakes, his faults, his whatever. And again, I used to be the biggest supporter of Moffat until he started screwing up and doing things. Mm -hmm. So this whole Christopher Eccleston thing is going to blow up even more. He's going to say something about Moffat. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to be this week, next week. A month from now, it's going to happen. So I can't wait to see that story because that is going to be – we're going to be vindicated again because we co we covered that already, how he was basically signed. And then when he found out so – for, first of all, you don't, like, go to sign somebody. And then you never tell them before that like, they're saying, oh, by the way, you're going to be responsible for killing women and children and billions of people on your planet. All right? No, they're like, yeah, we want to sign you for Doctor Who. Oh, that's great. Oh, my God. Regime change. This is awesome. Thank you, Moffa. Whatever. Comes to reading, and he's like, what the fuck's this? Mm -hmm. What the fuck's this? Mm -hmm. Are you crazy? You, you, I mean, nobody. No. So, of course, it was so weird that he left because he was part of it. Yeah. It was weird that he left. And, it, and because he didn't say a word, and he just quit production, quit the whole thing. Then they had to, you know, and they were still, the whole point was, they were still, like, they had the season going on to, you know, they had to throw that John Hurt thing in there, you know? They had to, like, get that in there to make it like, oh, yeah, this is always part of the plan. No. Uh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. No. You know how many, his best friends were pissed at him for doing but that? But that was, because they... You don't establish something for so long, and then all of a sudden, because you are now in charge, you have to change of something that is in the folklore. Come on now. To have a doctor gotta, that never existed in that place that you never talk about, you don't remember, mm -hmm. that you screwed up, and, and there's always going to be forever that Whovian fan <laughs> that's going to get it wrong. And he's gonna say Jody Whittick is the 14th doctor, or like the mm -hmm. the numbering is gonna be off forever yep. because yep. he screwed it up. Exactly. Always. Yep. Always. Always. Matt Smith mm -hmm. even got confused and called her the 14th doctor. Mm-hmm. So no screwed cause. up. Nobody, Nobody knows. Nobody knows what the, the number is, because I I I don't get it. Well, the I number was established, but then Moffat's like, "Well, can we really call him?" It's like, "There's not." You shouldn't think of it as a number. But he's the one that established it. You're the eleventh Doctor. You're the twelfth Doctor. Mm -hmm. They established that. So, you know what? It's coming out. It's all coming out, kiddies, fans, haters, whatever. All these stories are coming out. We covered this for years. Finally. So there's that. Mm -hmm. um, we also got word today that uh, Bradley Walsh is only filming five months instead yep. of the eight months. Yep. Hmm. So what does that tell you? Means something is not um, kosher in Denmark. Or someone's dying, or he's not in every episode. So could it be that he's in the first? And then he's not in the middle, and then he's in the end. Or is it going to be because is it going to be that he dies right away? Or is I mean, so in other words, the, the full time companions are going to be. I think there was four actually. Was yeah, there an older woman? There was an older woman. That's what I'm saying. It's four. Total. So we only see pictures with them though. I think she's she's a recurring character, so she okay. might not be in all the episodes. She might be in just some of them. Right. But, um, 
you know, I don't know what that means. That's just five months with, with him. I don't know. Does he have other commitments? That is that why? Maybe it's no big deal at all. Um, I thought that he was only doing Doctor Who. I thought he's doing the other stuff too. Isn't he doing that show, that game show, or something? Oh, too? maybe he's still. Maybe he is. He is. Yeah, know. maybe yeah. he's doing the presenter thing because I. Maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe he's just doing that. Yeah. You know? Um. We got that. We got, uh, you know, someone had told told me today on a message, and it's a rumor mm-hmm. that there's trouble in paradise with uh, Chibnall and the BBC. Now, I haven't heard anything yet, mm-hmm. and I haven't had any big sources that told me. I mean, there's been rumblings that you know, but I haven't heard. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to follow up on that it's, and see. Yeah. Yeah. He is going in crazy directions, supposedly. I mean, yeah. Even the people loyal to his way, mm-hmm. though on his side with Jody Whitaker, like, uh, what? Mm-hmm. Educational. Yeah, what I think the that's more. T- <laughs> Cause, come on, you can't do no educational with Doctor Who. You can implement it like by, but just putting it straight educational, that would be like PBS. Yeah. <laughs> Making Doctor Who PBS would not, I mean, it would hurt them actually to do that with that show because it's been sci fi for so long. It's established as a sci fi series, not an educational drum. I, I think that when it comes to the marketing or the promotional or the, they don't know what they're doing mm-hmm. lately, they put a trailer out for the Doctor Who game. Oh, well, how... Oh, and it, and they have yeah. Michelle Gomez signed, but they had nobody talking in the trailer. They had Missy talking in the trailer, nothing. They had some other voices, what? and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Is how this- do you promote a product when you have the stars in there that you could basically tease them talking as Missy or whatever? Why wouldn't you put that in the trailer? Is it the Doctor Who Legacy game? That's the yeah. one that's where we do. Oh, God. Is it oh, wow. Back out? It, it's Infinity. It was, it was just a teaser trailer. It'll probably release a. Well, why, wouldn't you, why wouldn't you talking. tease Missy talking? Like, wouldn't. I mean, I would do that if I was like in the production department. Hey, let's get people interested in the game by having people that they know from the show talking there. Yeah. Right, probably waiting for um, Jody and them to come along, and then boom. There you go. It's been three months since over three months since they put new content up for Legacy. They're using yeah, the new game as much. an excuse not to do do anything. Yep. yep. So it's gonna be Jody's game because usually when a new doctor come along, they have their own game. What have Capaldi advertising that game? That yeah. would make sense, but they don't see it that way. But I don't know if he's talking in the game. I don't know if he was hard. I that. think they said they got him his voice too. Did they oh, really? for the game? Well, I'll be dog. I know so she's I'll definitely play. in there. Yeah, I'm sure this is definitely. Yeah. Now is that that game? What game is that? It's like a. It's a the um the. It's like bejeweled or something. It's bejeweled. That was legacy. Doctor Infinity. They're trying to say is different, more story. But it's based. like bejeweled though. Because there's they like did... episode one's coming out first, and then episode. Oh yeah, three like time. they did. That's basically what they did with Doctor Who Legacy because they had like different episodes, but it was multi doctor. Like right. you, you had different doctors working together and. Okay. It's, Basically, it's bejeweled. You just connect it, but they have weird way of getting the juice to match. Oh, okay. And it combined like if you get power ups, each companion, each doctor had different power ups. So right. If you get a lot of them, you just you say you can like they um uh, power up, and then you press on them, and they do a they want them signature attacks. I gotta tell you, I'm so, and I know I I wasn't going to talk about this, but. Uh, anymore, but seeing the logo pop up everywhere, even with Capaldi and this new logo thing, it bothers the crap out of me. I'm sorry. I just can't get this logo behind being part of the whole brand now. No, I mean, that's, I, no. It's horrible. I that's horrible because each doctor has their own signature logo. Yeah. So, I mean, that's disrespectful to the, the previous doctors out there. She that should be her logo and her logo only. And it's and supposedly that's not even her logo because it's the whole Chibno era with all the female doctors having the symbol. That's the whole point. So no individuality, basically. <laughs> that's great. It's gonna be like Chris Ackleson and David Tennant's TARDIS is the same, like that. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Same sonic screwdriver. They both had the same sonic screwdriver. I mean, you know. 
So I don't know. Uh, I just I want good news. I don't want bad news. Like I'm tired of hearing like all these things that we don't like. I did figure out what maybe the King James thing is. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was thinking last night, and I've been thinking today. And I said, what period would they be able to use that had the most assignment? Because basically, Queen James was president, was the first president king. Oh, yeah? So, yeah, he had a lot of things, issues, like I said, with the cabinet. And I said, there is an event that happens every year over there, and it's called Guy Fox Day. Mm-hmm. And basically, that event is basically um, – the um, celebration of them stopping Parliament from being blown up. Okay. So um, I was saying that probably where they're gonna probably do that because it's an assassination attempt. I said, what? That would be a good arrow because it's a lot of drama and a lot of things. I don't know exactly to the point, but I think that if they was gonna do anything within the King James era, that would be one of the main spots they'll probably hit. Hmm. Because it's assassination attempt and it's the basis of one of their most, um, it's a, it's a, I'm not going to say they weird because I don't bash cultures, but right. it's an effigy of the traitor, which was Guy Fawkes. And basically Guy Fawkes is also the name of the mask that is worn in um, the Guy Fawkes mask. Yes, it's in, in um, Vendetta. Beef of Vendetta, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically that, that period would be probably what they are using. Because he, yeah. Okay, that's interesting stuff. Yeah, I don't know if mm. they're gonna use it or not. He might just be somebody that's um, discovered time travel. Yeah. Well, if we hear something good, we'll report it. I'm sure that probably April, maybe May, we'll get some type of thing about Dracula, the Moffat. Oh, jeez. Because him and Gatiss have been writing it since February, supposedly. So um, we don't know. We're probably going to hear while Doctor is off the air, they're probably going to show, oh, they casted this one for this, this one for this. Mm-hmm. And I guess all the Doctor Who sites are going to be probably covering that because they're related to working on Doctor Who because there's no news. There's and we may even have something filmed and aired before <laughs> the Doctor starts. So, I mean... Which is interesting. What a magical world we live in. <laughs> yeah. In the land of opposites. I know Moffat was not happy, and neither was Gatiss probably, that Martin Freeman said, yeah, um, I don't really want to do Sherlock no more. And you Sorry. Know what? They part of the MCU now, so why? Why would they want to go back to that? I know Moffat said, oh, they're going to do it when they're old, too, and they love yeah. this. And this now, yeah. now. Yeah. It's Nothing. all going to come out, baby. After Martin Freeman got that Black Panther money, he doesn't want to go yeah, back. for real. Yeah. But even Benedict, I'm telling you, it's they all, all going to come it out. Whatever happened, if there's any bad stuff, it's going to come out. Mm. I, I do want to give a shout out to the, the Sherlock people. I know that's a devastating blow because y'all oh, had yeah, to I love so that. long, so long between the second and third series, and then to be told, oh, wait, we're not going to bring it back is probably... I love thing. Moppet and Gators to Sherlock. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a big fan of that. And the last season was fantastic. Um, and it ended off like really awesome where it was open-ended, you mm-hmm. know, with their continuing adventures. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I would love to see that pop up every, every now and then. But, you know, odds are it's probably not going to happen. Um, so we'll see. And you know, Martin Freeman is not only just going to be in – Black Panther sequels, but he's going to be with, with Avengers, and mm-hmm. I'm sure he's going to be involved in all the different major it, things popping up everywhere. It's lucrative to be part of MCU now. Yeah. You get a lot of money. If you, can you get, get a lot of perks, you get a yeah. lot of a nice retirement plan. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that that's why a lot of people want to get into it. Yep. Like, you know, Michael Douglas, Chuck Pfeiffer's in it now. I Michelle mean, Pfeiffer in it for real? Yeah, she's mm-hmm. the uh, wasp, the original wasp. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I'll be. That's yeah. Cool casting. I love Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm glad she's getting back in there. Yeah. Him, him and uh, I mean her and Michael Douglas. I'm yeah. glad them too. We need some some veterans coming back. I know. So, 
Who's next to go to the MCU? Jenna Louise Coleman. I keep saying Jenna Louise Coleman because I okay, hated that they made her shrink the... her name. Yeah, she was in Captain America. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say yeah. she was in there. But will she be a big hero, superhero? Oh, I don't they, know. Because they need to get Peter Capaldi. I think she could be somebody big. I'm trying to figure out who she could play. But she could probably be somebody huge in the MCU. Jenna Coleman. Yeah. I always what? say Jenna Louise Coleman because I made I was pissed that they forced her Why to shrink her that? name. Because Why? they thought it was annoyance that her, like, who the hell are you to have this long name? Because. They're she assholes. With it. They really are. She should have rebelled. She should say something now. They forced me to change my name. Because, I mean, that's ridiculous. That's, 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 no. You don't do that to a person. If that's her stage name, then that. I mean, when Georgia Moffat is going to say Georgia Moffat Tennant. Tennant, yeah. I mean, so why do you let her say it, but not, you know, well, she probably the Georgia Tennant, but people, you know, if I don't that's, know. I mean, here's the thing with all this. You can't, that's, that's the problem seen with Doctor Who. They like to control their actors and they tr control them on the most idiotic, minuscule thing. Like, can't be they, on Twitter. Yeah. It's so I stupid. Mean, it's so stupid. I mean, why are you, I mean, come on, let them live their lives. If, they, if she wants to go by that stage name, let her have the stage name, god darn it. Who are I know. They pay people to like monitor the Twitter thing to see if anybody posts anything. They're like, you can't post that. It was ridiculous. Even they even went to Arthur Dog I think one time too. They were all like, they were not allowed to say anything. They're not allowed to tweet. They're not allowed to do social media. It was absurd. But Martha was allowed to have one until oh, they yeah. ripped him and then he got off there. Yeah. Which I'm sure he's still on there under a hidden name. I'm sure. Probably. Because um, I don't. Uh... Listen, I just, my whole thing with Moffat is, you know, you need to, you really should have, knowing you were leaving, seize the day. Yep. You should have answered these damn plot holes and storylines and all your stuff. If you actually ended things where it was like Doctor Who, like Tom Baker explaining things to Sarah Jane Smith mm -hmm. or Leela. I like that when the do or John Pertwee. Well, this is why this race does this and blah 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 blah. Yeah. But you don't explain anything. In fact, I think he was going to, thinking that Matt Smith was going to stay another year. Yeah. And then when that didn't happen, you explain the whole Madame Very thing for all this stuff in two sentences or one sentence. It's like just throw your ego away. And yeah, stop too. making the show where it doesn't make sense as a fantasy and just <laughs> explain something. That's all you got to do. And, you, and what makes me mad about the whole thing, you had a brilliant actor, a brilliant monologuist. He loves to do these long speeches. Play up to that. You could have you could have wrote like this whole speech about him explaining everything up to that point. And or break it off in sections like you and then you have somebody a character that will ask questions about different things anyway you couldn't even give her i mean she asked some of the dumbest questions though but she asked she asked some important questions too like where's the freaking bathroom on that ship and i was asking myself <laughs> that and where the where the restrooms and stuff at. she asked the important questions so i give her that right. yeah but i mean it's so much stuff that he could have done he could a nice season I love it to death. There were some good episodes. He could have just not done it and then had that whole season to to basically answer that. Could you explain why Missy's w was chilling with the Daleks? That's or weird. because she talked about that the Daleks knew that time would happen mm -hmm. with him getting married or whatever. Not married. I mean, living yeah. with River Song for 24 song. years yeah. or whatever it was, right? Yeah. So, like, why is she chilling with the Daleks? You know what I'm saying? I like, was she chilling with the Daleks? Because they were the mortal yeah. enemy. She was afraid of them at one point, and then she wasn't afraid with them. But why the hell? He doesn't explain anything. He doesn't explain how, what kind of energy was used to project Amy into the ganger outside the universe. Who could do that? Omega, Omega, That's whatever. True. But they don't explain nothing. They don't explain anything. Why the Weeping Angels walking around, like, and everybody sees it. What the hell? You created the whole rule book. On the yeah, Weeping Angels. Exactly. And then they they was they sucked in um class though. And he the whole his whole run is that he it will always be tarnished and there'll always be an asterisk next to Moffat's run mm -hmm. because his whole philosophy was wrong. 
and he contradicted his philosophy. The whole thing that, oh, we can't save the pawns, but then you retconned where he saved his whole entire race of mm -hmm. billions of people, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's okay, mm -hmm. but you can't save two companions. No, like, cause... And they're closer to you than some of the strangers on Gallifrey. No, because see, his thing with all of this is that he believed he didn't do it right. Like he played into the belief that there should be consequences. And that's not the way you do it. I mean, you should, if that, if it was truly that you believe that it should have been consequences, then that girl should have stayed dead at uh, Bill. She should not have been turned into, she should have stayed a Cyberman the whole time instead of you um, doing a fake out and having some girl that haven't been seen since the first episode somehow been creeping on her the whole time. Ugh. And I even knew that. Moment I saw yeah. that episode, I'm like, oh, yeah. she's coming back on the finale. Yeah. She's going to save the day. I said it because I'm like, what's that tear in her eye? She's like, that's not my tear. Like, mm -hmm. I said it. I'm like, this is obvious shit. He's doing yeah. it, obviously. You don't need to do obvious stuff. You need to do stuff, crazy stuff that you're not expecting. Like if Rassilon showed up because he's pissed that if from hell bent that, that you would have been I'm better. like, whoa. That would have been better than the thing three part that they did with the um whatever them people was, the blind people, they the I forgot the monks. They, right. That should have been a three parter. Rassilon forming a team to go after the doctor. Right. He sent the truth monk yeah. there. That would make yeah. sense. That would make more sense than what they gave us. Like because that means that they do suck. Mm -hmm. But they, you know, they're doing a little side job for uh, Rassilon. Rassilon, yeah. And they never did go back to that. Like, he kicked him off his own planet. Do you think that a person, a villain, would take that? You just kicked me off my own planet, and oh, I'm gone, I'm gone. But they should, have re they should have retconned it with the reset button in that sense, because now, those eight months or a year, mm -hmm. if he ever travels to that time period, right, in mm -hmm. that year, they're all under the control of the truth monks. Mm -hmm. So he could never travel to that eight month period, like ever. And how, why would you create a situation where you can't travel to? Because when that happened in New York, you was trying to fix it. So no, like now the whole year, they, they don't question all that time. Like he's making it like, oh, you, and this is Moffat making like people are stupid. It's okay, I'm superior. Every time he talks about something, it's like someone asked him about the moment, right? Right. And he answers in an open-ended thing where, oh, I kind of believe that, you know, in the future, the doctor's regenerating every day because he's bored and whatever. But you could say it's the moment that showed up and took the form of himself and talking to him could happen. But maybe it's not. Maybe it is. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's a doctor. It but he, like, he confuses the shit out of you. It's not like I said, this is what it is. Why don't you have the balls as the person in charge to not be afraid of anybody's individual opinion mm -hmm. and say, I'm the showrunner of Doctor Who, I'm the writer, this is the way it is, mm -hmm. and that's it. Just like when these people from Reddit try yeah. to create these crazy-ass fan theories about Greece, saying that mm -hmm. Sandy was dead and shit, that they keep hitting Facebook as fake news, but people think, oh, this is real? And and the creator of Greece said this is bullshit flat yeah. out, just like yeah. James Cameron said about this is bullshit, right? He needs to have confidence in himself and saying the moment was a, a doctor in the far far future that may or may not happen because Tom Lynch constantly changes because he interacted with himself. Whatever, that's all you had to do. Explain something, but he doesn't, and this is why. A lot of people are against what he does because it's like a bad relationship. They go yeah. crazy. It's like nobody could – it's like, oh, you want to like, what are you, crazy? Like, answer something. Answer something. It's so. just he, – he never going to do it, though. And I, that makes me sad because I would think a showrunner should have a little bit of confidence when you run in a successful show. But basically, he's probably – you know – I don't get him. I think that he's, I mean, get, don't get me wrong. He is a fantastic writer when he's on point. But any little thing can knock him off of that. Oh, yeah. Any, any distraction. Thing, anything. Any distraction. Can Somebody can piss him off. him off 
or he could eat a bad meal. Exactly. And then he's writing a Christmas episode with freaking crabs and, yeah. and, and weird shit with Santa. We it's gave like, him, oh my God. Yeah. We gave him the buy because he went through a tragedy during the, the, the month thing. Yeah, but the still, month, that doesn't, if you can't, if you burnt out, you should have been pre okay, I'm getting burnt out. I have no energy for this. You could have had just show it and then instead of writing something, you should have had like this, 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 and prepare to be exiting. That should have, if he knew, when did he find out that he was exiting? It was in the ninth season? I don't know. It's so, it's so, I don't even know if I believe half the shit that he said too. Mm -hmm. Because it's, but here's the thing. I wouldn't have wanted him to leave if he did his job and answered and resolved the damn questions and storylines. But he never did. So get out. Because why are you torturing us as fans for years on end? Right? Mm -hmm. Now it's a situation where I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he starts watching his old stuff yeah. with Russell T. Davis. And he starts to see the difference. Oh, when I was under somebody, my stuff was perfect. Yeah. But when I became a showrunner, I didn't realize it, but my ego was through the roof. And it wasn't my best work. And you know what? I maybe if I get a break, maybe I would want to go back to doctor to fix some things. I'm going or even write some books or something. Yeah, I and I I would say this. I'd be like, you know, that's the thing with Doctor Who. It needs extensive house cleaning. This right. whole thing that has happened so far, this should have been waited till like season fourteen. To be honest, they need it to concentrate on fixing stuff first until they did like a drastic stunt casting like this. Cause this is basically what's gonna end up to be a stunt cast. Uh, it, you know, you could have used season 13 to clear up so much stuff. You should have kept Capaldi for one more semester, I mean, not semester, <laughs> for one more yeah. uh, season and then transferred him out. Like a like a where normal job. What do you do when you finna leave that job? You have a period to do a transition period. That that season should be that transition period. Like you have people coming in, you can say, "Oh, I'm gonna answer this, 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 this," and then the finale would have been the switch. But they didn't have a transition period. The transition period overlapped it with them exiting, and that's not how you do things. And that's how you got half of the crew not there. Capaldi ousted, basically. But you also get to see the side of Moffat when they try to make him do something to BBC, mm -hmm. and he doesn't. He's not a team player. Right. Like he doesn't play along completely. Like when they told him, "By the way, um, we're going to put Matt Lucas in there, so mm -hmm. just take care of that." And the way he writes for him, it's like, yeah. Even Matt Lucas is like, "This is all I got to talk." It's like Matt Lucas makes the character memorable on what yeah. he has, which is hardly exactly. anything. But Moffat really didn't want him there, you know, because if he did, he put him in these crazy storylines that had him as center of attention, right? I liked the bond between um, Noddle and the Doc Trump doctor. I thought well, that that's that that's that that the, the because Peter Capaldi is awesome, and yeah. they they had a nice rap for it. Mm -hmm. Not because of Moffat, because Moffat, no. whatever he was doing or whoever else was writing for them. But I got to tell you that. When the BBC went to Moffat and said, we're doing a Doctor Who spinoff, because he kept refusing them. He says, mm -hmm. I'm not doing the prognostic game. I ripped up the check. They gave me a check, right? Yeah. He says, all right, well, you don't want to do it. Someone else is going to do it, and we're going to hire for the Patrick Ness, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I know, I'm pretty sure he was not happy about that, okay? Because yeah. here it is, some outsider mm -hmm. is given some aspect of Doctor Who and he has no control over it as Moffat. Mm -hmm. So he basically was, I guess, producing it or finding the money for it or whatever, right? Yes. And he kind of put the Weeping Angels in there, right? Yes. But he really didn't back the show. He no. really didn't talk it up. He really didn't help it because he was angry inside that he got told what to do. Yeah. And... You, he didn't even promote that he's the producer of class too much. He wasn't like every day, oh, look, class was fantastic, class, 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 because he wasn't the head guy. Mm -hmm. So he's part of the problem why it failed too. Yeah, because exactly. 
whatever knowledge that he had or expertise, he should have carried it over to Patrick Ness and, and said, blah, blah, blah. But he didn't, he didn't do that. But you know what? The only redeeming factor about class was Miss Quill, because she she was on it. She was like one of the strong characters over there. And it's sad that they didn't make it work. Because well, that's why you got uh, Jodie Whittaker is going to be like a Miss Quill type of thing. Look what she's wearing. Yeah. She's got like a coat like Miss Quill. Yeah. We even she thought does. she was a doctor when they were teasing us, remember? I would I would love to see that actress play the doctor because she was good at Miss Quill. I would love to see her play, have a turn at the doctor. Yeah. I, so that's kind of like the model, I guess. I mean, because Jodie Whittaker looks like I mean, they look yeah, like each other. Spend it, yeah, she does look like spend She's Jodie Whittaker's younger, I guess, right? Or whatever. She's, I don't know. she's my age. Okay. So that's the whole thing. It's like, I think Moffat, you know, he needs to get rid of the ego and he needs to really reflect on that all these fans are coming out against him. It's only because they were let down by him, not explaining things. I mean, what is the big deal? You, you see yourself as super intellectual, right? And you see you, everybody else as inferior, right? But you don't get it that you have to get their ratings for it to be great, right? So, like, you're not happy with the ratings going down. It's your fault. But why don't you – and I'm not saying he has to cater to the fans, but everybody uh, – most of the people, that they resolve things, you know? He just didn't resolve anything yeah. that I know. With yeah. the exception when he was on the Rusty Davis, he resolved stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, but why can't you just answer damn questions? What is it that your ego won't allow? It? People would love to, you know, if he did a Weeping Angel story where he explained shit, people go crazy about it. Mm -hmm. They would, they would, they would, I mean, if he said, you know what, I'm coming back to Doctor Who and I got a break and I'm, I'm going to explain, I'm going to just, you're going to be, oh my God, you can't, you're not going to believe it. I would be all for it because I'm like, good, explain your shit. <laughs> Before Matt Smith, explain your shit. Forget the rules because the rules are out the window the moment the doctor became a woman. Yeah, so exactly. if you're going to say yeah. there's rules, yeah. there's no rules. There's Matt no Smith reason. could come back tomorrow. David Tennant could come back tomorrow. The, the doctor back. could be African-American or African woman or a midget. Oh, I mean, there's the no doctor. rules. The doctor would never be American, unfortunately. That There are no rules now at all. At all. You can't get Peter Dinklage as the doctor. There's no rules. They, oh, they can go anywhere. Anywhere. You know, how, you know how awesome that would be if he was the doctor? I know how awesome it would be. That's why I that said it. Awesome. Man, that that Peter awesome. Dinklage, sign up the contract. For real. I agree a million percent. Mm -hmm. Million percent. That, that I love him as an actor. He, he is a, yes, he can Amazing act. actor. Amazing. And even if they didn't get him, but they got Charles Dance as the master, I would mm -hmm. love that. Because I loved it when they said it in the past, that would be the greatest casting ever. I love him as an actor, too. Um, but anyway, they would have to do the fan casting. But uh, mm. yeah, if Moffat just took care of that shit, then there would be, if he did something right, look, we praised him left and right when he did the Doctor Dance's Empty Child, mm -hmm. Blink. I mean, nothing but positive came from us. Yeah. But when he did bad shit, oh, we called him out on it. Like, great job with Davros now. I mean, hey, you just prevented the whole thing from him becoming my help. <laughs> it's like, okay. Wait, is Davros walking now? I don't is have a, any idea what the hell he did, if he changed the entire timeline or not, or what. Because I have no clue right now. Because he still He saved him at the end. The end. <laughs> As a kid, he saved yeah. him at the end. So I have no Which idea. Which means now. that it predates him meeting him as a fourth doctor. Right. Meaning you don't know if he saved him from losing his legs. I mean, we don't less know. Than, less than a minute. Yeah, so again, I mean, even the regeneration energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, Missy was with them, so obviously he should be able to walk now. Mm -hmm. He should be younger. He should be whatever. Yeah. I don't know. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Thank you for hearing us rant, and me rant especially. Take care, bye for now. Bye.